Welcome back, folks, to another episode of Code Club. I'm your host, Pat Schloss. Thanks for coming back for another episode. In the last episode, we learned about the separate function from the tidyr package. We use that function to parse the RDP column from our RNDB metadata file that we've been working with. This allowed us to create distinct columns in our data frame for each taxonomic level from kingdom to species. But along the way, we noticed that there are about 200 genomes or so that had multiple taxonomic assignments. This happened because the folks at the RNDB used the RDP's classifier to classify each copy of the 16S RNA gene in each genome. As I've been suggesting throughout the, these episodes, this is part of the problem with amplicon sequence variants, also called ASVs. What's the problem? Well, 16S RNA gene sequences from the same genome aren't identical. And by treating them as identical, we run the risk of splitting one genome into multiple taxonomic groups. Instead of having multiple taxonomies per, per genome, we'd really like to have a single classification for each genome. Taxonomies should be organism and not gene specific. It doesn't make sense for each gene to have a different taxonomy if it's coming from the same genome. So after thinking about this issue a bit, I've decided I'm gonna scrap what we've done for, for the RDP column and instead retrieve the NCBI taxonomy. Well, Unfortunately, although the RNDB metadata file has a column for the NCBI taxonomy, there's not actually anything in it. I suppose I could email them and ask them to put it in, but eh, that's like such a bother. Therefore, what we need to do is to trace back the taxonomy of each sequence using some other files that we can download from the NCBI. You'll recall that our metadata file has a column for the tax ID for each of our genomes. So we can get a file that gives us the taxon ID of the parent node of each of the taxon IDs that we have in our genomes for our genome sequences. Then by getting the parent node of each parent node, we can trace each lineage back to the root of the tree. We can also get the scientific name for each taxon ID so that we can always bring back a name to the story. So how do we do this? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We've previously talked about doing an inner join to join two data frames to each other. Well, we can also do an inner join to, a, to join a data frame to itself. This is called a self join. Imagine doing an inner join between our metadata and the file or the data frame that maps our nodes to previous or parent nodes. We could keep doing this, joining the output of that to the mapping file on and on and on until all of our parent nodes are at the root of the tree. Along the way of today's episode, we'll learn about the unite function for uniting two columns together. We'll also see some of our old friends like separate, anti-join, left join, pivot longer, and pivot wider. You'll recall that I, I covered a couple of these um, functions in previous issues uh, without explicitly focusing in on them. And so what I'd like to do on today's episode is re-expose you to them and see how you can use them in different contexts. Even if you're only watching this video to learn more about R and don't know what a 16S RNA gene is or don't have a clue what an amplicon sequence variant is, I'm sure you'll get a lot out of today's video please take the time to follow along on your own computer. If you haven't been following along but would like to, welcome! Please be sure to check out the blog post that accompanies this video where you'll find instructions on catching up, reference notes, and links to supplemental material. The link to the blog post for today's video is below in the notes. So you'll recall at the beginning of the last episode, we actually made two issues. One was to generate a taxonomy string using the RDP. The other was for the NCBI. We didn't know at the time that the RDP would have some issues with it. So it's good that we already filed this issue. And in this issue, you'll recall that we have a number of different links. Let me go ahead and start by opening up my RStudio project. Here I am in my project root directory. Because I think a lot of the things that we had for the previous issue, uh, if we go ahead and scrap um, what we did here and get genome ID taxonomy, that we probably don't really need a lot of these things, right? So um, sadly, I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff. <laughs> um, and so what we started with was the metadata. So that's gonna be good. Um, the species subspecies lookup, um, I'm pretty sure we don't actually need. Um, this makeup tax was because we used these numbers uh, that we had to add because they weren't in the summary data from the RNDB. Uh, which is also this stuff here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff and I don't think we need it. So that species lookup file, species subspecies lookup file, 
um, isn't isn't really needed. I'm going to leave this test statement in here. So if we return to our make file, looking at my make file, you will recall that we did have this rule to get species subspecies lookup.tsv, and we use this code of get species subspecies lookup. So I'm going to change this file to get ncbi tax lookup. Um, and so then we'll change this here. And I'm going to go ahead and rename that file. So you might be tempted to just rename it. But remember that this file is under version control with git. And so we need to treat it specially. So we'll use git mv code uh, get, uh, what was it, species subspecies lookup. And we want to change that to code get, uh, I think it was, what I say, ncbi tax lookup dot sh. And so if we did git status, we see something new here, right? That it's been renamed. And this reminds me also that I need to create a new branch, a new issue branch. So I'll do git branch issue uh, 26. Oh, gotta spell it right. Git checkout issue 26. Great. And then we do git status and we see that we're renaming the file. Good. And if I now go look at get ncbi tax lookup, I don't want tax cat, I want tax DMP, um, tax DMP. And I'm not sure what files output I'm gonna want. So let me go ahead and run these two lines so I know what kind of output we're gonna get. So again, we retrieve it from ncbi. Uh, this takes a couple seconds. While this is downlo downloading and uh, while this is downloading and um, opening up, it's a good opportunity to go ahead and like and subscribe uh, the Riffamonas channel. Be sure you click on the bell so you know when the next issue is released. All right, so we see we get all these new DMP files outputted. The two that I'm most interested in right now are names.dmp and nodes.dmp. So let me copy these over and I'm gonna do MV on that. We're gonna rename these. And oh, I copied the wrong thing. All right, and so I'm going to name this ncbi nodes lookup dot dmp, and I'm going to call up oh, names lookup, not nodes. Well, I copy this down while I've got it. This is going to be names lookup. Okay, and we can make these the new targets in our make file. All right, so this is going to be uh, and I'm going to make that TSV. I'll go back and change that. And this should be nodes lookup. And because we go across a line, we can put a backslash in there. And there's my backslash. Tab this in a little bit. And that all looks good. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and come into this file and change that DMP to TSV. Um, they're not really tab separated values files as we'll see here in a minute, uh, but it makes me feel good to have it as a TSV. And that's important. Okay, make that. So we already downloaded it, it opened that up. Let me look at the timestamp here. So 927. Um, yeah, for some reason, the timestamp is getting kind of funky here um, because this is actually older than what I already had. Uh, let me look at code uh, 949. So um, this should be doing that, but I'm not sure what's going on. Let me go ahead and remove the zip file. And um, anything that ends in DMP and rerun my make. And so this, yeah. Let me look at the timestamps again. 
and I see that text DMP is 927. So this is from a bit ago. I don't know why I'm getting an older timestamp. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on there. Uh, but this is not going to be an episode on debugging make. So we'll call this good for now. And later on, we'll perhaps come back and figure out what's going on with, with that. All right. So we've gotten our nodes lookup and our names lookup. Let's come back to our studio. And we want to go ahead and read in our nodes. So we, we'll do a read the limb uh, data. Um, raw NCBI nodes uh, uh, references. Uh, so this is nodes lookup. It's going to take a few steps to get this read in. And ah, I forgot to run all my other stuff and like loading the tidyverse. And I need to give it a delimiter. So if we look at head data references, uh, we'll see that the delimiter are these vertical pipes. And so that's what we want to use. And so we'll do delim equals vertical pipe. The other thing that we want, uh, so if we do this, we see that we get a lot of white space in our column names, right? So there's a tab, a column name, and then a tab. And that's a problem. Uh, there's also a problem that we don't actually have column headings, but we'll get to that in a second. So we can do trim ws equals true. So trim white space equals true. And you can already see from these column headings that they've removed uh, the, the tabs around the names. So we need to get these call names now. So we can use call names and we're gonna feed that in as a vector. And we need to go ahead, get myself oriented here, um, back to our data references to the lowercase readme.txt. And uh, these are the column headings. Really all we care about is tax ID, parent tax ID, and the rank. Um, but we still need to give names to everything else. All right, so we'll go ahead and copy and paste these in. I'm gonna uh, put the column headings in quotes. Really, it doesn't matter what I do here because these are kind of fields that I don't care about. Right. And then I want to get rid of all this other stuff to the right and replace it with a comma. So copying and pasting speeds things up, but sometimes you still have to clean up the text once you've pasted it. Just a few more here. Again, what we're doing is we're creating a vector that contains the names of the columns that we're gonna read in. Okay, and that's the last one. So we close that with a close parentheses. Um, and these three are the ones I'm most interested in. So I'll probably just leave them for organizational sake on their own line. And just kind of make it look pretty. All right, so we can now read in this read the limb. Yep, and I think I have um, one too many closed parentheses. Our, using our studio is helpful for figuring out those little uh, syntax things that you might screw up along the way. So this read in things pretty nicely. All right, so we've got our nodes read in. Let's assign that to a variable. And we're going to want to get names. And it's going to be fairly similar where we're going to do read the limb and then data references and then NCBI names lookup and then the limb equals the pipe and then trim W space equals true. And I realize this now has gone off the side of the screen. So um, 
just tidy this up a bit. Whatever. Can worry too much about spaces. All right. White space is not the topic of today's episode. I have to remind myself that. Get rid of that quote. All right. And we want to get in the names, um, the column names. And so let me come and do head again. And okay, that's what it looks like. But again, we need to look at our readme file. And yep, I already had that open here. So the names.dmp, that's what it was originally, um, has these fields. So we're going to, um, we don't need that closed parentheses, but then we need call names equals C, open parentheses, and we need tax ID, name text, uh, unique name, and names class. We'll get rid of all this other stuff and make it a vector. Okay. And let's go ahead and run that. And it's complaining because why is it complaining? Because I think I'm forgetting a closed parentheses. Okay. So this reads in names. And so it's complaining because uh, there's four columns, expected four columns, and I actually got five columns. Let's look back at this head. And what you'll see is that if this is a delimiter, the pipe, then we've got a pipe at the very end. And so there's actually something missing from that um, because it's creating a fake column at the end. So I'm going to call that blank. Oh, not that one. Yeah, that one. So if we read this in, that doesn't give an error. And now if we look at names, we see that uh, we have a tax ID, we have the name, we have the unique name, which I'm not really sure what we're going to do with that. And then we have the name class. So you'll see that there's like for bacteria, there's a scientific name, there's a blast name. Some of these have in part names. What we really want is the scientific name. And so I'm going to do a filter so that uh, name class equals scientific name. And again, if I do names, I see that I've got um, a scientific name for everything. And really all I want is the tax ID, the name text, and I can get rid of these other columns. So I'm going to go ahead and do a select on tax ID and names text. And this will then get rid of everything else. Uh, names text doesn't exist. Uh, name text. Again, all the typos are baked in. <laughs> That's the way I program. So if you if you have typos, don't feel bad. So again, now we have a table that's got the tax ID and the name for that. And uh, coming back to nodes, um, I'm a bit surprised that when I ran nodes earlier, it didn't give me a similar error because I would think that that would have also had, yeah, it gave me the same error where we had, it was looking for an extra column. So I'm going to add a blank uh, to that as well. And let's rerun nodes. And it doesn't give us that error message, which is great. And what I want is to select uh, the tax ID and the um, I'm going to call it parent tax ID and we want the rank. Now I need to rename uh, parent tax ID to be back parent space tax 
ID. And I'm renaming this because I don't like having to type those back ticks. I don't like spaces. And so if everything can be underscored without spaces, then our lives will be happier. We then run this. And if we then look at nodes, we then see that we've got the tax ID, the parent tax ID, and the rank. And so what you can imagine is if we just took this and we could then, we could join this data frame on itself, joining tax ID to parent tax ID to kind of work back up the tree. And so that's what we need to do now with our metadata file. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this for right now, save it. And so what we've got is our metadata, our nodes data, and our names data. And I think that's enough to regenerate the NCBI taxonomy for each of our genome sequences. To illustrate what we're gonna do with these inner joins, we're gonna do inner, or with these self joins rather, with inner join, uh, is that we're gonna do nodes, comma, metadata. And we're gonna do, um, what are we gonna join? We're gonna join by, and in nodes, you'll recall, I think that was the data frame I just had up, we have tax ID, and what we wanna get for each of our genome sequences then is the parent tax ID. So we will do um, something equals something, and in our, um, so we want nodes, no, we want, ah, we want tax ID, and in metadata, I think it's also called, well, I called it subspecies ID. Um, that's fine. We could go back and change that to be tax ID, but whatever. So we're going to join those two together. And you know what? I'm going to do, I'm probably going to go ahead and clean that because there's a few things I want to do with metadata here that I don't, I don't need the RDP because we're going to scrap that. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and call this tax ID instead of subspecies ID. And if I run all this now, uh, right. It didn't like that because I removed it. So tax ID, we run that. Metadata. And so now we have the genome ID, the tax ID, and the scientific name. Um, but this reminds me that after running this, we have a column of our RDP data, um, which for these first couple hundred uh, genome IDs, they're RNDB numbers. They're not actually genome sequence numbers. And that's because the copy numbers were determined empirically. I think I mentioned that in the last episode. So the, um, the RDP column for those is an NA. So I'll do filter not is dot NA RDP. So I'm going to get rid of everything that um, has an NA for the RDP classification. And this then starts us with our genome IDs. Again, to clean up the data set a little bit. And then the output of all this, if I look at metadata, is that we have a genome ID, a tax ID, and a scientific name. Now, if we come back to our inner join, we're going to take the nodes data and the metadata, and we're going to join them on the tax ID column. I don't need to do tax ID equals tax ID, but we'll see where we're going as I run this. So what you'll see is that we have tax ID the parent tax ID, the species, the genome ID, and the scientific name, okay? That's great. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the tax ID and the rank, and I'm going to join those together to make a new column. That way, um, when I do my next join, I don't get confused between different tax IDs, right? So like the next thing we're gonna do effectively is interjoin with nodes and what we've already got, and so we're going to then do by equals um, tax ID uh, equaling uh, parent tax ID, right? And so this then starts getting really confusing um, and messy. I got a extra parenthesis there. Oh. Let's see. Let me try this again. Ah, and I'm forgetting a parentheses here at the end, so I'll just put that there. And so you'll see that these column headings start getting like X's and Y's at the end. So again, to avoid that, what I'll do is unite, and that brings things together. And I'm going to call this 
uh, T underscore or TR for tax ID and rank. And I will then say, um, what am I going to join together? I'm going to join, get my column headings again. So tax ID and rank. rank. So this is the syntax. And I think I can do sep. Yeah, sep. And I'm going to use an underscore to separate those. So this should look familiar from last time where we could put in a separator and later we'll use separate to separate by that separator. Now when I run this, you'll see that we've got a new column of tr. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this tr underscore a because we're going to do a bunch of these as we kind of move back the tree, right? So again, what we get is tr a and we have our parent tax ID, our genome ID, and our scientific name. And so now when we do this next level of the join, we see that we have our TRA, but then we again have our tax ID and our rank and our, our parent, right? And so we can repeat this unite to make that TRB on tax ID and rank. Ah, and we've got to be sure to put a pipe at the end of that line. Ah, I've got too many pipes and not enough pipes. Okay. Again, we see the same type of thing. We've got TRA, TRB, and the parent tax ID. What I'd like to do is we're going to keep repeating this a bunch of times. And I want to count uh, the number of times each parent tax ID uh, comes up. And we're going to repeat it until we only have one parent tax ID, because that will indicate that every sequence has gone to the root. All right, so I'm going to copy this down a bunch of times, and I'm going to change my TR to C, D, E, F. Let's see where that gets us. That's through six levels, and we see that we still have 85 parent um, levels. Uh, one is the root, two is bacteria. So many of our things are already back to the root. And I'm going to, again, keep copying this down and updating my TR to be G, H, I. And we'll come back soon to clean up all these TR names. Okay, so we're down to five taxonomic levels or five parent tax IDs. So we're getting close. Let me go out to KLM. Aha, we made it all the way. Let me remove one of these just to see if we actually needed the M. Yeah, and we do need the M. All right, good. So again, what we did is we kept joining our data frames back to nodes, uh, to that parent node, so that we could kind of build out the tree. And we kept doing it until we got to the point where we only had one parent node, which again is our root. If I remove this and run it out, what we see is that we've got our various TR names and our parent tax ID. So I want to create a test and I'm going to call this, so I'm first going to call all these inner joins tree. Now, I want to step back and say there's probably a more elegant way to do this using something called recursion. This works pretty well for us. I'm going to create two tests. Um, so again, I'm going to create tree. And we saw a test in the last episode. So I'm going to say tree. And I'm going to do my count uh, parent uh, tax ID. And what I want is this to be a data frame that has one row, right? So I'll do n row, all right? And so that's one. And so I'm gonna create this as test A. And I'm gonna do stop if not test A equals equals one. And run these, right? And so it, do, it doesn't complain, so it's good. So again, if the database gets updated and say, I needed to go another level because the database gets updated, then it will complain and it'll complain here and I'll know that I need to go back and add another level. The other thing I want to do 
is I want to make sure that everything in my tree is represented in my metadata, right? So we talked about anti-joins last time. What we can do is anti-join on uh, metadata and tree. And um, I think what we can do for tree is that we want the genome ID. Yeah, so we want to make sure that all the genome IDs in our tree are also in our metadata. And so we'll do genome uh, by equals genome ID. And then I'm going to do again n row. And I'll do stop if not test b equals equals 1. If I run test b, uh, genome ID not found. Uh, I think this needs to be in quotes. And then if I run uh, if I run this next line on line 80, error test B not equal to 1 is not true. Okay, well let me look at test B and we find that it's got 32 rows. Uh-oh. So if I run just that anti-join part, I find there's 32 um, effectively tax IDs that aren't in my tree, that aren't represented in my tree. This reminds me that there's another file that we downloaded in data references uh, from that tax DMP file called merged, merge.dmp. And if I look at merged nodes, um, that this merges old tax IDs with new tax IDs. And so what I bet is if I take one of these old tax IDs or one of the tax IDs I couldn't find, I bet it shows up in merge.dmp. All right, so let me, where are you, our studio? Let's take this tax ID and I will use grep, which I think we've talked about in a previous episode. So that's my current node that it can't find in my tree data frame. And I'm gonna look for this in data references in merge.dmp. And we find, sure enough, this 62928 has been renamed. And so what I need to do is I need to, um, I need to bring in this merged file and then join that with uh, my metadata file to update those nodes. All right, so this is another file we're gonna want. So merged.dmp, ncbi merged lookup. All right, and I'll run this back in my terminal so that if I look at data references, I now see that I've got, um, where'd you go? NCBI merged lookup, okay. Yeah, for some reason my timestamps are doing really funky things. I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, um, I guess I could always go ahead and add a touch on all these. Uh, so it'll be NCBI star lookup and that, that will take care of that problem. It's kind of brute force. All right, so we need to come back and let me get the column names. Um, so it's old tax ID, new tax ID, and come back to our studio because we're going to want to read in the merged. And we'll do merged, read the limb, and it's going to be data references, um, NCBI um, merged lookup, um, delim equals the pipe. We're going to do trim ws equals true. And then our call names are going to be what I put old tax ID, new tax ID. Those probably aren't the names I really want to use because they're not going to make merging super useful. Um, Oops. All right, but we'll work with that. Um, so again, we've got this problem where it's got the blank extra column and we can then um, get rid of that blank column 
And now if we look at merged, we get our old tax IDs and our new tax IDs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna throw this back up ahead of metadata. And I'm gonna add to my metadata data frame. To test things out, because it takes a little bit of time to read things in, what I like to do is, as you've seen, uh, not name the, the data frame that I'm creating. So I will do metadata, and I will then do inner join. And I'm gonna do what? Metadata, comma merged, by equals, um, and then metadata is gonna be tax ID. And on merged, it's gonna be old uh, tax ID. And I don't need an equal, a comma, I need an equals there. So if I run that, um, join columns must be present in data, merged. Oh, so I think this should be a period and we're good. And we see now that we've got um, tax ID and new tax ID. And what I'm realizing is that this now only has 32 rows and it's lost everything else. And that's because of how an inner join works. And so what I would rather do is a left join. So you'll recall a couple episodes ago, I said never use left joins. Well, turns out I guess I do. Um, and so what a left join does is it keeps all the names of things in the data frame on the left, um, even if they're missing from things on the right. So the merged only has the things that have been merged, that have been changed, had their IDs changed. So if we run this, uh, we find the 15,000, that for many of these, the new tax ID is NA because it wasn't found um, in the merged data frame, okay? What we'd like to do with this then is we wanna mutate the tax ID column. And we're gonna use a function called if else. So we'll use if else, if else um, not is NA, uh, new tax ID. So if new tax ID is not an NA value, then after the comma, then we want tax ID to be that new tax ID, okay? Otherwise, so we have two sets of commas to create three fields of arguments for if else. Otherwise, we wanna keep tax ID, okay? And if we run this, we again see that these haven't been updated um, and, and we'll come back and see this later, but for now, I'm gonna trust, that this, trust the process, trust that it worked, and we'll select to remove new tax ID. And I'm going to add this to my metadata pipeline. And so now if I look at metadata, uh, that all is good. And I'm going to rerun uh, creating my tree. No errors there. My first test works. Test B, ah, and that doesn't work. So test B, so um, I see the value of test B is zero, which tells me that I actually created a data frame not with one row, but with no rows. And so um, this test should be zero, okay? So my test failed the first time because I had stuff. My test failed the second time because I expected to have one row and it actually had no rows. So, um, so now everything is great. Okay, now what we want to do is that we've got um, our tree. And our tree again has everything we'd want. We could get rid of this parent tax ID, but we've got all these TR values, our genome ID and our scientific name. What I want is my genome ID, my scientific name, and then a column for each taxonomic level. And I'm gonna do parent tax ID, or I'm gonna select to get rid of that, okay? Let me move all this up so we can see the data frame get spat out. And again, I know I'm going fast. There's a lot of content in today's episode. If you go to the show notes, there's a link to a blog post for today um, that will show you how to get uh, the files that the file that I'm working on here. You can also always go to 
the GitHub repository uh, to see what's going on, to see kind of the full package. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pivot longer. We're going to take all these TR columns and gather them together to make a um, five column data or four column data frame with our genome ID, our scientific name, the column heading and the column or row value. So we'll do pivot longer. And what we'll do is um, we'll do calls. And again, the reason I use that TR, like we saw in the last episode, last episode is I can use start um, starts with, and I can do TR underscore. Okay. So this will give me all the columns that start with TR and the names to, um, I'm going to do um, uh, TR and values to, I'm going to do um, ID rank. Okay. And it should work. It does. And so we've got the genome ID, the scientific name, the TR, the ID rank. I do not care about TR, okay? So what we can do is we can select uh, minus TR, get rid of that column, and now we have ID rank um, and, and everything is looks good. Uh, that space and no rank really freaks me out, so I'll, I'll, I'll chill out a little bit. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate ID rank. We saw separate last time, and so we'll separate ID rank into, into uh, and we'll create a vector of column names. So we'll say tax underscore ID, and then rank. And so now we have, this spits it out, um, we should get, um, yeah, we got it. We got four names. Uh, genome ID, scientific name, tax ID, and rank. And I'm seeing that uh, that space, <laughs> no rank, um, caused problems. And that's because I forgot to put in the SEP. And the SEP is the underscore. And this should work now, with no warning messages, no errors. And we have genome ID, scientific name, tax ID, and rank. We're good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mutate um, no, I'm not going to mutate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and filter. And we saw this last time. Um, I'm going to filter rank um, to look for those rank values that are in, uh, not the pipe, in percent, percent in percent. And it's going to be super kingdom. That's what they call kingdom. Phylum class order. Uh, family and genus. Um, let me before I do that. Let me go ahead and do count on rank to see all the different types of ranks that are in uh, this data frame. And so you'll see there's all sorts of things. Uh, let me go ahead and print everything. Looks like there's about 24 different names here. You know, there's biotypes, there's clade, class, forma, specialis, all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, but really, I want to keep things simple and keep it to um, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and of course, whoop, what do we do here? Um, and species. Okay. Close parentheses. And I uh, can get rid of this count row and we'll run that. And I'm going to rename, or we'll wait. Um, let's see. Let me break this up a little bit so it is a little bit cleaner. And now what we can do is that we can do pivot wider. Again, we saw this in the last episode. So we can pivot wider and take names from uh, rank and values from tax ID. And that should be good. Great. And so again, we see our super kingdom, phylum class, genus, order, family. Um, 
I'm not sure where my genus or species went. Ah, so I see where my species went. <laughs> um, I'm I on my filter I use species parentheses quote rather than parentheses uh, or quote and then parentheses. So let's try this again. And so we see now we've got super kingdom phylum class species genus order family. Uh, not the ideal order. Um, we'd like to rename. Uh, kingdom to be super kingdom. I don't know why they use super kingdom instead of kingdom or domain. And that gets our nice names. Now, I don't care about these numbers. Um, that's not what I want. I want actual names to get plugged into here. So what I'm going to do before this pivot wider, and so um, let's see, if we run this, we remember that up to that, through that filter, we get genome ID, scientific name, tax ID, and rank. What I'd like to do here now is another inner join. You're doing like 100 inner joins in this episode. Uh, and so I will then add in, join in, in our names data frame and do it by tax ID. And if I do that, I think we'll replace, we'll get our taxonomic names as a new column. Let's see. I uh, can't join on X tax ID with Y tax ID because of incompatible types. Let's see, what kind of types are these? So this is a character. Ah, so my tax ID came out as a character, and you'll recall that before uh, we had this problem with separate in the last episode, we can do convert equals true. And so again, if we split apart, you know, if it was two underscore super kingdom, when we separate it, two uh, becomes a character super kingdom as a character but if we use convert equals true that two will become a number let's give this another shot and we now see that it joined we have our tax id our rank and our name uh, which is great and i'm going to go ahead that's good and we can um i'm gonna get rid of uh, my tax id and I will then bring back up in my pivot wider. So names from rank, my values from names underscore txt. And then we'll rename our kingdom, super kingdom to be kingdom. And I think we're going to be in good shape. Names tax doesn't exist. What? Okay, let's try this again. Uh, name text, not names. Okay. Wonderful. This all worked really well. Um, and so what we see is we have our genome ID, our scientific name, kingdom, phylum, class, genus, order, species, uh, family. Um, and I'm going to uh, write this out. But before I do so, I'm going to write out the columns in the order that I want them. So we'll do uh, genome ID, scientific name, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Again, the order doesn't matter uh, to the computer. Um, it orders to, it ma the order matters to me and my sensibilities. And finally, we'll then do a write TSV and it will go to data. Um, and where did it go? Uh, let's go look back at our make file. And there we go. Uh, data references, genome ID, RDP taxonomy. Let me get, get rid of that RDP taxonomy. And this is going to be what we output it as. OK. So that's all good. And let me run it. And now if I do a head on this, winning, right? We have exactly what we had back in R. Now we need to clean some stuff up in our make file. So we want this, we don't want um, 
these two files. So what we want is, um, what did I call it? Um, in our references, we called them NCBI uh, nodes lookup, and we had names, and we had merged lookup, okay? So that's all good, I believe. And I'm gonna modify this get NCBI lookup to remove references star DMP. So we'll get rid of everything else that was a dump file and um, trying to, yeah, let's go ahead and leave that readme text file. I'm not gonna make it a target or anything, but I'm sure we'll need it at some point. Uh, so I'll go ahead and save that and update the outputs um, here in my header. And again, it was nodes and merged. Okay. So I think that should be really good. And we can get rid of that and we should be good here. Um, I want to go ahead and remove the, um, the NCBI um, or the, what was it? My genome ID uh, RDP taxonomy file. And that all looks good. And we see that we've modified our make file. We've modified our genome ID taxonomy R. We've modified our NCBI tax lookup.sh. And we've renamed it from the get SP SPP lookup to get NCBI tax lookup. So again, using that git move, git MV, allows you to keep track of the history of the file, even going back to its former name. I think we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and git add uh, make file. And also that stage, that commit, that um, renaming has already been staged, so I don't need to add it. Uh, code git uh, genome ID tax ID, taxonomy .r, uh, code git ncbi uh, lookup sh. That's all good. Git status. Those are great. Git commit dash m, and I'll say retrieve ncbi taxonomy for each genome closes number 26 and get um, checkout master get merge issue 26 wonderful i now want to go ahead and make uh, that target so we'll do make data references um, why am I forgetting what it's called? Um, genome ID taxonomy.tsv. So again, it's going to download the stuff, inflates it, runs all that. Um, data references. And I see I get my merged lookup. I think it did update everything um, and it says everything is up to date. So again, something funky going on with my timestamps. Not totally sure what's going on. Oh, I know what the problem is. Uh, the problem is I didn't, no, I had those as dependencies. Ah, I think a problem here is that I put an extra backslash at the end of that last requirement. So now let me try this again. And it's now gonna run the R code to, to build out everything. So I'm glad I checked it before I pushed it up. And I can um, let me get add my make file, amend that. That looks good. I'll quit this out. We're in good shape, and I can do git push and close out the issue. Again, I know this episode had a lot going on. Uh, it's longer than a lot of the other episodes. But it really shows how we pull together a lot of the concepts we've been talking about in the recent episodes. We talked about separate, we talked about unite, we did a lot of inner joins, um, we did pivot longer, pivot wider, and it all came together for one problem, which was to take our tax ID for each genome sequence and recreate 
a tax taxonomic string for each of our genome sequences. It's kind of harder, it's hard to break it down into smaller chunks than that. Um, and along the way, you see how we did some problem solving, how we created some tests to make sure that everything was accounted for as we went. Um, and so now we have this file that for every one of our genome sequences, we know its scientific name, we know its kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And so we can go back now with our ASVs and group by any of those taxonomic levels to get us um, information about how unique an amplicon sequence variant is to any of those taxonomic levels, um, as well as how many ASVs there are for any of those taxonomic levels. So again, um, this was a big step. I know it was a lot. Uh, feel free to come back um, here to my code in GitHub, where if you go code, and then it was get genome ID taxonomy.r, you can see everything that we did um, in today's episode. Okay. Um, and again, there's just a lot going on in here um, and really encourage you to come back and look through this in greater detail. Now, um, I'd love to see what you're doing with these concepts that we talked about, these different types of joins, um, the, the way of pivot longer, pivot wider, uh, separate and unite in your own work. Feel free to leave a comment below in the notes telling me how you're using it. If you have any questions, again, I know this is a lot of content. Um, we did a lot scientifically and we did a lot with R. So please tell me um, if you've got any questions or things that you wonder um, if we could have done them a different way. Um, and perhaps we can experiment with those in a future episode. So keep practicing. Please tell your friends about these Code Club episodes. I'd love to expand the reach. Um, I know a lot of people are already benefiting from them. Um, so please tell your friends, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.